Thank you, Danelle. I'd like to introduce our next guest speaker, Lane Hensley. Lane is our COO and co-founder and head dream chaser at Odyssey Teams. Everyone wants to be Lane's friend and listen to his podcast, You Go First. Lane is one of those rare people who sees what often you don't see in yourself. He'll reveal your magic and he'll get you to believe in yourself. He is generous, smart, oriented to make things better. Please welcome Lane Hensley. And to un it. Now we're gonna have all kinds of echo effect here. All right, we're working out the bugs here. I'm actually on the PV campus. There's some of our crowd out there. Maybe you guys give a shout out. And uh, I think we'll want to turn off the audio that's going through the big screen so it's not echoing. Okay, can you still hear me, Danelle? All right, perfect. And you'll hear me just through live out here in the audience. So, uh, technology, I love technology. Here we are embracing the moment. All right, everybody. So thank you for the welcome. Thank you, speakers. Uh, my name is Lane again, and I'm lucky enough to be a part of this program today. And I am going to attempt the impossible, something that has never been done before, but I need your help to do it. And as I've watched the speakers today, I just thought, man, this is like CPR for the soul. And if you've ever done a CPR class, you're kind of sitting in that class and you're thinking, oh, okay. And you, maybe you're joking around with your friends. And then you go out of the class and you go down to the grocery store and boom, somebody drops and you go, hey, I just went through the CPR class. I know what to do. You call 911 and you go about your business and you get things done. And all of a sudden you have this new skill. And honestly, I, as like challenging and heavy as some of these thoughts have been, and as I've watched the speakers today, I'm like, you know what? It's CPR for the soul. Like we know that the soul is hurting and that there are plenty of people out there. If you walk onto any school campus, after a CPR class, you know the high risk people are, right? You're like, okay, this is this person. This is that person. There are a lot of high risk people. And you're going to leave today's session with a whole new way of seeing those people who are high risk, and you're going to have the ability to, to use the skills you're learning today. And for me, CPR means, hey, care, protect, and respond. The simple. Just show them you care. You know, uh, take action to protect them from themselves if needed, from the situation they're in, and respond. Take some action. Encourage them that you will be an advocate for them. You'll help them through that path. So, Honestly, care, protect, respond, CPR for the soul today. Thank you, Danelle, and everybody who's put today together. And now I want to dive into really like I'm passionate about this topic because guess what? You know, as I hear the statistics, I have three that are in the class of people that it's rising, this, this, this struggle to find your mental wellness. And, um, you know, it's personal. I know every time I get a text from my daughters, they're off at college and they're like, Hey, I'm just feeling kind of bummed today. You know, I'm like, oh my gosh, how bummed? Do you know what I mean? I can't help but think, do they need something that I'm missing? Because everybody out there has been impacted by suicide or someone harming themselves significantly. It is like, I didn't even know, or I didn't realize it was that bad. And we missed something. And there's a huge responsibility that we all share. Now that we have this, this information, we are able to perform CPR. We know the actions we need to take, or at least we know I need to do something and we're gonna help people reach out. And it's personal. This is our family. Our schools are our families. This is my family. And I wanna be here for all of you. And some of you know me because I've been around Chico for 30 plus years, trying to impact the community, trying to help and, and reach out and hearing these numbers is just heartbreaking, honestly. And, and, and my session today is not going to be just Lane talking and telling stories. I want to tell you a little, give you something to think about. But all of you out there, or most of you, or hopefully you have this little art packet. Like we sent this to you because we're going to do something that has never been done before. And honestly, in the end of this process, we will prove to you through this that your contribution matters. And honestly, I don't think there could be any more serious message, which is if you look around your school and everybody's thinking, you know, you go first to make a difference. My podcast is called You Go First because oftentimes people are saying, well, you go first to, you know, notice that that person that's hurting. You go first to, you know, report that situation. You go first to stop somebody. 
And what does it take for you to have the courage to go first? What does it take when you recognize that you are the one with the power to make a difference? You're the one that has that sees a situation no one else sees, and it's up to you to take some action or to help someone ask for help. And so I want to dive into a couple of thoughts that I have as far as what happens and why we sort of shut down. And then we're going to dive into this project that I have for you. It's going to involve these art kits. And if you're here at PV, you know, uh, you don't know, but I have your art kits out on the tennis court. And that's where we'll be doing our art today because we can't be painting in here. All right. My belief, everybody wants to engage like that kindergartner, right? We're like, ooh, ooh, I'm at school. I'm in life. Let's do this. And then at some point, you know, something bad happens. We have this moment where something unpredictable happens and our world changes and maybe we feel stupid. That ultimate dunce feeling of like, I asked a question, I got it wrong. My friends laughed at me. I start to show up less. And when we think about suicide, we think about someone hurting the body, but ultimately how much of our soul, how, how I might still physically be here, but am I really present? Am I Am I alive? Am I living? Am I present? I think a speaker just said he walked around numb. Like how much of us is present? And that's that's what we want to drive for is not just that you're physically well, but that your soul is well. And I learned through activity. I like to do experiments with people. Uh, and if I ask for a volunteer in here, you know, it'd be slow to get a volunteer because we usually learn to wait and then somebody would have the courage and then we would go on. And some of you would maybe never volunteer. And those those experiments kind of show us the current state of ourselves. And a couple of things to think about, you know, what causes people not to participate? What causes people not to take a risk and help someone in need or, or ask for help? And I just have to look to myself, what causes me not to? And when I feel like it's not safe for me, I know that it's sort of this magical combination of my genetic code and then the way my brain works and the chemical structure of my brain and the way my eyes filter my environment. And if I go to someone and I sort of take a little, to put my toe in the water and ask for a little help and, and they're like, what are you talking about, man? You're just being this. And, and they close the door immediately. My brain will start to process my environment and this part of my brain called my reticular activating systems default message gets even louder. And that is when in doubt danger, don't take a risk. Don't put yourself out there. Continue to protect yourself. And pretty soon we end up alone. And many people today spoke about those times when they were alone, when their reticular activating system, when it surveyed its environment, it didn't see any safe place to move. So it decided I'll just continue to look inward. And we have to be that person that says, no, I'm here for you. I trust you. I will not judge you. I want to support you. I want to hear you. I want to listen to you. And we have many adults on here today that are really taking, they're going first to say, I want to be a person making a difference for this generation. And all the young people that are on here today are saying, hey, I want to either get help, learn where I am personally, or learn how I can help the people around me. That's, that's, how I, that's where I'm coming from today. And I want to, again, like I said, throw you into an activity, but this activity will challenge your beliefs about yourself. And we all carry these beliefs. You know, I am nice. I am mean. I am an athlete. I am out of shape. I am friendly. I am whatever. And, and those beliefs, as we find ourselves saying these I am statements about ourselves, I am shy. I'm good with technology. Oh, I'm bad with technology. If you've ever tried to help one of your parents or grandparents with the technology, right? Like I, I am, and this is hard stuff. And people are like, people are wonderful and people are irritating. You know, how do you answer those questions? And life is life is beautiful, life is challenging, and people have bumper stickers that says, you know, life is horrible, and then you die. I mean, what, why would you put that on your car? But they do those things. And when we think about these beliefs, they, they matter to our brain, they matter in how we see ourselves. And ultimately, sometimes we put ourselves in a box. And how do we find the key? How do we encourage people to help us get out of that? And one of the boxes that I want to just shatter today is this, this one I have on here, which I am an artist. You are gonna be artists today. They're gonna to create a unique work of art that is my, my guess. And again, I'm trusting 552 people here on this screen that you will produce something today that's beautiful. And, and honestly, my metaphor is like, we've opened the chat box and I love that there's beautiful comments happening in the chat box. 
because with great power comes great responsibility, right? Everybody knows that. And the chat box is responsibility. We're giving you the opportunity to contribute to this masterpiece that we're trying to create of mental health and, and suicide prevention and understanding these things. This is part of our masterpiece that we're painting today. I am compassionate. I'm a good listener. I'm good with technology. I'm a great friend. These are all beliefs that will serve you after today. And one that will serve you right now is I'm a great artist. I'm an artist. I can do this. Okay, so right now I want your little voice in your head. I know everybody has a little voice that's talking to them all the time. I want your little voice to say, okay, I am artistic enough to get this job done. All right, I am an artist. Okay, so let yourself say that three times. And if Cho, my great friend Cho, I know you're in New York coming to us. Thank you, Cho. Uh, I am an artist. I am an artist. So we'll just kind of let that sink in. And I want you, I think of uh, getting ready for a journey. We're going to go on a journey together right now, this artistic journey to create something that will really symbolize this ending of the silence. Okay. This image that's, that's going to be so beautiful is created by a local artist and you'll recognize the artist when the art is done. But this time the creation is in our hands. Okay. So pack for your journey, meaning get, be aware of where your supplies are. Okay. You're going to need those. You'll have time to locate them. Don't leave the screen yet though. Cause I have some instructions to give you. Okay. And I'm going to, I'm going to dive into those things. So once you get your art, now the cool thing about this, and if I open this one up that I have here and you're going to have like a napkin, you're going to have some paint brushes. You'll have some little squares. Okay. That we sent you. You'll have a little paper plate. Cause you're going to be like Van Gogh. You're going to be mixing the different colors because the color of this painting is not straight up red, yellow, or white, or blue, or I have green here. You're going to need to blend this. And life is about blend, right? And But what I love about these paints is you can create every color with what we've provided you. Every great work of art was produced with beginning with these colors. Every great life, we all have the ingredients to mix and match and create whatever we visualize. Now today, we have a collective vision. We have a collective vision that's gonna be created with your contribution of what you create with these paints, okay? So let me show you more about how this process works. So when, when COVID hit, I had been traveling all over the world from Singapore to India and all over doing these, these mosaics, these giant murals where everybody would paint a small square and we would stick those onto a wall. And then we would see what it would reveal. Of course, I knew what the art was, but once they painted it, it looked totally different. And it was their sort of perfectly imperfect masterpiece. And it was mind blowing for all of us. And so we thought, how can we do this in the virtual platform? So we wrote the code. Actually, Jack Sheridan, who's a Chico High grad, who's doing awesome out in college. He wrote the code for this software system that we're diving into today. And this team mosaic requires that you, of course, do your best, right? We want your best contribution. If you're typing something in the chat box, you know, have it represent you really well, right? Have it be a contribute. I love the one speaker who said people are going to either uh, add, they're going to subtract, they're going to multiply, or they're going to divide, right? So our commitment is that your, your piece will contribute. It will add to our masterpiece, okay? And of course, I want you to work together. If you're sharing space with somebody out there and you don't know how to mix that color, you can, of course, Google it or whatever you want to do, figure out how to make the color because the, the matching of the colors between the squares is going to be important, okay? Take your time. I'm going to give you enough time. We're going to have, from right now, it's almost 11 o'clock. You're going to have an, uh, it'll be maybe 50 minutes. I'm hoping to reveal the final mosaic before we go to lunch, Okay. That's, that's our plan. You, you guys in here, when we leave, you'll have to kind of walk quickly out to your supplies, okay? But I'm hoping to be done with the instructions in the next five to six minutes, and then boom, we'll be on our art project. Take about 40 minutes for you to complete just one small tile. So take your time. This thing is gonna live for years to come. Commit yourself fully to accessing your artistic self, okay? And your piece matters. Of course it matters. So recognize the responsibility. Your role in our community matters. 
that you have relationships that matter more than you realize right now. And after today is the CPR for the soul, you will see ways to contribute to those relationships. Now I need to show you a short video because this video is gonna show you, kind of give you a sneak peek into how the software system works, okay? You'll be accessing a website called Team Mosaic and you'll just click enter and so forth. And I'll give you a few more instructions, but let me show you uh, this quick video here. And uh, hopefully volumes are up and uh, you'll hear what I'm seeing on my screen. All right, here we go. Mosaic system and here are a few tips to help you along the way. By now you have received our awesome Team Mosaic supply kit. The when password's you written on the, on the website, it tells you to draw a square. You don't have to do this because your square came Can you guys hear this at all? Kit. I mean, For the best results, website. try to use the same art supplies as other members of your team. If you don't, your lines and colors I'll will not match those of your teammates and the results will not reflect what's possible. Next tip, you will need to take a photo of your recreation to then be uploaded into the system. Here's how to do that. Take the photo from direct. Hey, Lane, I'm not sure about everyone else. I just lost the sound on that. Does everyone else still have sound? The photo is not one of those formats. Screenshot the image in your email to convert. Somebody to muted JPEG. me for a sec, Note, so we're good. Do not airdrop the photo to yourself. If you are using your phone for the entire process, this step is not necessary. Can you hear it now? Yes. And finally, while adjusting your image, we have included some tools to help the process. Use the scale tool to move in and out, the drag. This is an important step, okay? I hope you can hear me out there. When you create your masterpiece on this little tile, okay? It's white now. Then you're gonna take a picture of it with your phone. You'll upload that photo into the system, into the system okay? You'll email it to yourself and put it on your desktop or wherever you like to put a picture that you wanna know where it is. And then at this point in the game, you'll find that photo, you'll put it into our system and then you'll crop it like you're making your uh, holiday card or whatever. Make sure you crop out everything around the perimeter so we only see your tile. And you can see here, she's gonna twist it and all of that. This is a super, super, super important step. Okay, here we go. To adjust and the rotate tool to make it perfect. Make sure to crop out anything that's not a part of your image, including the outline of your square. Keep in mind, this is a simple process. There are support videos at each step on the website. So take your time, help each other out, and most importantly, have fun. All right, so I am trying to communicate this process to all of you out there. Be assured that if I just said go and gave you the link to the website, you'd probably figure it out. I'm just hoping that a few of these tips and tricks are gonna make it easier for all of you. So our masterpiece truly is a masterpiece when we reveal it and we don't have pictures that have not been cropped out and that you recognize the relationship between your tile is going to matter to the tile next to yours just like as i look out in this stage in this audience here the relationships between you and the people next to you matter and their impact and their impact it is ultimately this ripple effect that will create our masterpiece that we're producing today i want to show you a couple things this is a previous group so you can see, oh, I get it. Somebody painted that tile. Somebody painted that one. They loaded it into the system. You can see that cloud lined up nicely. So that's what's happening here is we are lining up our image with everybody else's image once we're in the system. Once you click enter, okay, we're going to put in the chat box in a minute a link to the Team Mosaic platform. And you will see this screen. But this screen will only come up after you enter your email address. And you answer a very short question that I put in there, okay? That allows us to communicate with you and we can see which square you uploaded into the system, okay? And that way, if there's an issue, we can go, hey, your picture is blah, blah, blah. And we can make sure that we get your tile perfectly placed into the mosaic. So you'll have two questions. Then you'll see this screen. Once you click, click here to begin. Let's hope that's obvious, all right? But you'd be surprised. You're gonna see this sea of blue squares and one of them is green that's the one i selected and then once i push next that square will be x'd out 
So if you're another person in the system, go to one of the blue squares, just any random one, click on it, push next, and then it takes you to the next step. At, the, at each of the steps, you'll see a little next button at the bottom and you'll see a progress bar along the bottom. So in this sample, that's the square that I need to paint onto my tile. So it's got purple. Oh, I need to figure out how to make some purple. It's got this kind of aqua line. This looks like a fairly difficult one. Some are easier, some are harder, but guess what? Some people's lives are easier than others. Some are harder and it's random. So when you click on your square, accept what the world has given you and do your best with it, okay? And of course, work together to reproduce your version of what you see in that square and then just click next. This is the cropping tool page. You can see we want it nice and square and enter that thing. At the bottom of that page, you can see there's a progress bar. And then there's one final button that says, hey, when you click this button, there's no going back. You'll click that button and then it will take you to a screen that says, congratulations, you've completed the mosaic collective masterpiece. If you wanna do another square, click restart, okay? Because we have, I think almost, let's see, 536 people are on right now. And we're, we have a, a, an image that has about 620 squares. So some of you may do more than one square. You're invited to do that. If you only have one square in your kit after you've uploaded the first one, just paint right over it and make it look like the next one, okay? All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. Uh, <clears throat> do your best. The link is now in the chat box. So Allison's gonna put that in. I had 39 minutes, 50 seconds. We're looking perfect here. Uh, I'm gonna give you 35 minutes from right now. Hopefully you've all done at least one tile. The computer will autofill the last few, and then you can keep uploading pictures for uh, images until all the blue squares have been taken. But for this block, I'm hoping to reveal it before our lunch break, okay? So have fun. Right now, we're gonna throw you into some painting groups. So Allison's gonna push a magic button and all of a sudden you'll be in a breakout group with like 10 other people or looks like 11 other people and uh, you can paint together. So this is not a solo art project. This isn't all of us together art project. Allison's gonna kick you into breakout groups with 11 people, say hi to each other and see if you can work together to complete the task. If you're really struggling, leave your breakout group. You'll find me here and then I'll talk you through any of those last steps, okay? Okay, now I'm gonna turn it right back over to Lane as we transition into our World Cafe for the afternoon. Lane, are you there? Are you ready? I'm still here. I'm still here. All right. Uh, thank you, Cho. Great to see you again. And uh, to everybody, I was reading the chat and I know I think the chat, some people can see and some people can't. I was able to look in and see some of the awesome comments uh, that went in about the mosaic and uh and, and also some very sweet compliments just to me um i'm a dad you know i'm a part of this community at the same time i'm just this like lost little kindergartner you know that's trying to figure out hey do i have a place in the world you know am i making a difference um and i i could barely sleep last night you know at 2 33 i'm like okay you know I, it's like going in my mind what today would be like and of course, technology is a big hurdle. It's, it's challenging and we're relying on it more and more. At the same time, for years, we've prided ourselves on these conferences where we're like, no cell service at Richardson Springs. We got you know captive audience. So thanks for navigating all the distraction and for being present, contributing to the mosaic. And now we wanna produce these like really personal conversations and we're, we're not able to put you into really small breakout groups. So, you know, the Zoom platform, we have 505 people on here. It's awesome. And, and we can only put you into a certain number of groups. So you might be in a group of 25 people. And in that group, there'll be young people, there'll be community leaders. And I think my job right now is to just kind of set up, I, I want to speak to the community leaders as far as what we expect from you as you're in those uh, breakout groups with the young people. And Danelle, is that true? Should I just uh, sort of lay out what I, the expectation is from the community leaders before we do the breakouts? Okay, awesome. So when I was thinking about, you know, here I'm 53 years old and of course oh, going on 54, but my soul is like 14, you know, I'm still trying to land a flip on a wakeboard and I do stupid things, you know? And at the same time, my son is a freshman at Chico High and we have these like morning conversations about 
hey, get in the car and blah, blah. And I realized most of my time with him is corrections. I'm trying to teach him this and improve that. And you can do this better. And I'm not having as much fun as I want to have with him because I've got the answers to all the questions. And that's not cool. Um, so I, I thought of like, how do I express perspective uh, in a quick way to all of the, the folks out there? And obviously the, the young people are going to see these images as well. So um, in the spirit of being curious about the perspective of a 15 year old, my son, and trying to be a better dad, a better adult, check out this image. Okay, what do you think when you see that image, right? You're like, oh my gosh, look at those dogs, it's so great. If you've ever been bitten or attacked by a dog, you, you're having a reflexive response of like terror right now. And, and that's what's happening. And when we talk about people who are in serious depression and they're contemplating things and they're in these, our perspective of a, a sunny day is totally different than theirs. And understanding that what we find is like a natural, inviting, wonderful, maybe situation is terrifying to them. So this is an image, and I was like, oh my gosh, the beach, I love the beach. If you've ever almost drowned or been in like a surf and a riptide or something, that's a terrible thing. You're like, dude, I want to go to the beach. So the goal for this session as we, as we go into these conversations and for the, the community leaders out there, I've got sort of, here's my tips and tricks, okay? Number one, I want you to breathe and listen. And Cho is so good at getting me to like, we call it chowing out, by the way. I've been lucky enough to do a, a camp, a Camp Royal. Some of you may have heard people going there for the last 17 years and we get a week of chow. So imagine that. When we're like, you know, hey, let's chow out for a sec. So I want you to breathe and listen. So young people, that means you're gonna be breathing and then stepping up. So we hear you. Okay, and then take notes. Okay, so community leaders, be taking notes, please. Don't trust it to your memory because if you're not taking notes, then you'll reflexively think of what you want to say to that young person and then you're not listening to them anymore. Your mind can't do those two things at one time. So stay present when you hear a little nugget that you want to remember, write that down and then boom, stay present and keep breathing and listening. Tip number three, breathe and listen. Tip number four, ask questions. When there's a gap, it's, it's fine to ask a question, but then listen, make your question short, okay? Ask the question and then let's hear from the young people, okay? And the last thing, breathe and listen. We're gonna have three rotations if we have time, and I think we do. And on the last, at the end of each rotation, we're gonna hear from some of the young people as far as what they heard from each other, what they might've heard from a community leader. And then at the end of the last rotation, I'll give a block of time for community leaders, adults, people who look like me maybe to jump in and you can make a comment to all of us. So we can really get a reflection from a sample size of the community leaders and adults that are on the conversation that really wanna step into the gap and make sure we are serving this young community. But if we're not listening and we're not asking questions and then listening to their answer, our motor's still running the whole time, we're not gonna hear something new that they say to us. And if we're jumping ahead in the way we listen, we're not going to hear anything new. So put your mind on neutral and really hear what they're saying and not what you think they're saying or what you hope they say or what you would say if you were in their seat. OK, so those are my tips and tricks for the community leaders. I think uh, Matt and Stan, I know one of you is out there somewhere uh, and you've got maybe a, a quick message yeah. to the young people as we send them into these breakout groups. Yes, I do. All right, we're gonna pretend like these adults aren't here right now. What up, my dudes? Awkward All right, technology. There we go. All right. Okay. Well, let's pretend all these people over eighteen aren't here. So I'm just gonna to talk to you all. This is what we asked for. Yes, I'm saying we like I'm still a kid. I'm like nine hundred times as old as you. But let's let's think about this. We want to make sure, right? that you know what you wanna say, even if it's 20 seconds before. Know what you want to express. So if you have a story, one of the questions is about what are y'all struggling with right now as youth? Center yourself, get it in your mind and figure out that main point that you want to land with them, right? So earlier, I was talking about something and like barely hanging on without breaking down. 
So be mindful of how big what you're sharing is to you, not because they don't need to hear it, but because you also have to take care of yourself through this, right? Speaking with courage is about forgetting about how you sound, forgetting about how you look, and believing that what is coming up from your gut in your mind is going to hit hard and it's going to land. This is your truth, right? So we're not asking you to imagine something that you don't know. We're asking you to speak to your truth, the truth of the questions you're being asked. If we are in larger groups, y'all want to make sure that you step forward and step back. Share your story. Be real. Be real. And step back. We want to make sure that you feel safe while you're doing this. So if you're sharing something and all of a sudden you feel too exposed, say, that's all I can share and step back. It's all good. It's all good. You want to be able to articulate what you need and want. So when we get to the questions about what you all need from us as students, know what that is. And, and even if you are about to say something and somebody else says, reinforce it, say it again. You all have some similar experiences. You have some different experiences, right? So step forward, step back, have a sense of what you want to say. Speak with courage and don't worry how you look and how you sound. You're a messenger. You are carrying your truth and you're delivering it to these adults. And there's nothing more pure than that. And if you feel sort of overwhelmed after we do the breakout groups or during the breakout groups, reach out to one of the adults on here, Danelle, myself, and any of us, and we'll make sure you got somebody to talk to. All right? Hey, go get them. Awesome. Hey, thank you so much. And I think, you know, I think uh, Matt's out there as well. And I appreciate what you just said, you know, as a, a young person, as a presenter, a, a long time ago, somebody said, you know what, Lane, people don't want perfection, they want connection. And when you're speaking from that truth, that like heart of like, what's the nugget of trying to express the connection will happen, it might not come out perfectly. But you know what, that, that's all right, it gives permission to other people to share if you make a mistake or the way you might see that. Uh, Matt, are you out there? Can you help kind of prep us before we send, uh, send our groups into their conversations? Where are you? So I think Stan is probably going to jump on in a second Something here, but I just, somewhere. I just, yeah, Stan should be on in Actually, a minute. What, what am I saying, just Matt? You're right there. Yeah. Uh, somebody just texted me another name. Let's see, who else? Stan, where are you? That's who I was talking about. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, he'll, he'll be jumping on in, in just a oh, minute. I don't know what I've done. I've turned my volume down. Sorry, Matt, you there? Say again. Stan will jump on in just a minute. Here. Okay, okay, no problem. That, that, was a, that was a curveball. Sorry, Matt. Hey, thank you, Matt, for your story today. Uh, unbelievable and for setting us up. So I don't want to talk any longer because they're going to start forgetting what you just said. Okay, so let's do this. Oh, there we go. He's back. Hello. So if you just jumped in, we're in the block. I don't know how much they prepped you about. We're about to send them into conversations. You're prepping our, our young people just to be ready to roll. So okay, sounds good. Yeah, um, yes. I haven't been prepped on how to prep you. So we're going to do this together. <laughs> um, so uh, is Matt here with me as well? Yeah, Stan, I, I just talked to them a little bit about um, stepping forward and stepping back when they're talking to the adults. They're going to okay. get a chance to share their story. They're going to get a chance to answer some questions, three sets of questions. Um, the first will, will sort of have to do with their experiences. Um, and then sort of last, we'll wrap up with what uh, our students feel they need. So if you have any advice for as somebody who, like me who speaks all the time for how these kids can speak with courage and uh, speak with safety, we'd love to hear it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's talk about safety first, because taking care of yourself is the most important thing. So, as, you know, as we're doing this, 
Um, I don't know if they are the individual breakouts going to be recorded. No. Okay. So then that that's a layer of safety. I mean, just in general, as you are moving into a space where you may become an advocate, um, there's a group out there. There's a lot of groups out there that um, help can help you shape your story. You know, and you never want to give too much of your story. You can, you you want to give yourself to help others, but you never want to give too many shavings off of your soul that you can't recuperate them. Uh, there may be specific details about your your story. Um, so maybe you want to refer to your experience as a friend's experience to keep that layer of cover. And there's nothing shady about that. Um, that's just about protecting yourself. So if you need to speak more kind of ambiguous about this has happened to someone I know, uh, that's perfectly acceptable. Um, but just, you know, always uh, protect yourself. And if there's something where you're like, oh, I'm not sure if I want to share this part of me, uh, my recommendation would be to don't not to share. Uh, now, granted, what's said in the breakout rooms, uh, it sounds like it's going to be kept confidential. It's not going to be recorded. It's not going to be posted. Um, but just kind of beyond, above and beyond that, um, just always make sure that you're protecting yourself. Another thing as far as safety, uh, safety for others, is that when you're talking about um, any treatments that may or may not have worked for you, um, it's best to, you know, most of the experts agree that it's best to not share any specific, say, medications that might have been effective for you. Because uh, if they were effective for you, they might not be effective for somebody else. And that can actually send somebody down a bad path because they're like, oh, well, this, this person said it would work and now it's not working. So as far as safety goes, uh, those are just a couple considerations I would want to have. Um, I guess as far as, you know, saying what you want to get across, I, I think the most important part is um, what I talked about earlier, realize the power of the voice that you have. Uh, this is amazing that there's 500 people that are still here that are all willing to listen. Um, so if you have something to say, like I said earlier, don't sit down and be quiet, make sure that it's said. Uh, that being said, I would encourage you um, to kind of maybe take a strategy that I do when I walk into a media interview. So I do like television interviews, radio interviews. And uh, what happens in those is that oftentimes I'll be interviewed for 10 minutes and then they'll cut down to like 20 or 30 seconds. And so I have no control over what they're going to cut it down to, right? Uh, that's why I like live interviews the most because I get to control the context. But when they break it down, um, one of the things that helps me make sure that I'm getting my message across clearly is I, I write down on a little post-it note three things. What are the three things that I'm trying to communicate? Maybe it's only one thing. Maybe it's two things, but no more than three things. Don't overwhelm yourself or the, the person trying to listen. Uh, be very clear about those central points and always try to bring it back to those. Um, as far as uh, the conversation, so uh, can, can you give me a, a, or can you type in the chat what are the questions that they'll be provided in those three rooms? That would be helpful. And then, um, wonderful. Sorry, I'm just reading right now. So what are the biggest challenges and struggles young people are facing right now? What are the things causing the most stress for young people? What do you, you want adults to know about what you're experiencing? All right, so all those questions are based upon your experience as youth. And I would really encourage you, even though they're based around you as youth, uh, that doesn't mean that that experience is any less than because you are youth. Um, like I spoke to earlier, you, uh, your experiences are justified, whether you're 10, whether you're 14, whether you're 55. Uh, don't ever let anyone take the legitimacy out of the experience that uh, how you felt. You know, can, your opinions and your feelings are yours. Um, and at the same time, I guess I would challenge you to, uh, as Matt was talking about, it sounds like step in and step back, you know, make sure that other people have the opportunity to speak. So when you're speaking, uh, your voice is powerful, it's important, um, but also uh, try to be as succinct as possible. One of the, the compliments I get when I do, you know, interviews or talks is that people say that I speak in sound bites. So um, I try to have each thought kind of be its own idea. Uh, so that if they don't hear the next part, they still have that idea. So I don't know if that's at all helpful, if that's making sense to you all. Um, any of the youth out there want to chat in? Uh, I, I think you guys can chat me um, directly, at least. Uh, what questions do you have as far as walking into this? Um, what might be some of your fears, your trepidations? You know what? You've done a great job. Honestly, I appreciate your perspective. Um, so I, I feel I'm really thankful, Stan, you and Matt have brought so much to our, our experience today. And we have stories, we have people in the room with great stories. 
And this is really our jump off point to starting to hear their stories coming to us. Uh, and I think you just set us up perfectly, honestly. So, um, okay. yeah, yeah. So big kudos to all of you. If they can hear you here. Can you guys give them a round of applause so they can pick that up on the mic here? So we're in the auditorium here. And uh, as somebody who's been traveling for the last 30 years, that room looks familiar there. So life on the road gets old fast. So uh, thanks for being out there, you know, giving your heart and soul to the things you're passionate about and uh, changing lives. So, so thank you for that very much. Both of you guys appreciate it. Um, all right. With that, I think everybody can hear me. Stan, you look like you could hear me. So that felt good. All right. We're going to we're going to dive right in. So. Allison is out there somewhere pulling the string on our, our breakout groups, how big or small those will be. We have an auditorium full of young people here and some community leaders. So we're going to have a live conversation here. For those of you in here, don't worry about jumping back into the Zoom meeting. We'll just have our conversation live. And we're going to have about 20 minutes for this conversation. Yeah, we're looking for, uh, I'm going to say 17 minutes. Um, I, th I think I got a nod from Sierra there. 17 minutes feels, feels right. Here are the questions. I'm going to leave those up on my screen right now. Allison will dump them into the chat box. Looks like she already did with Stan's request. What are the biggest challenges uh, and struggles young people are facing right now? So that's you. Uh, what is causing the most stress? So when you think about stress, like I said, I know I cause stress on my son and I don't want to do that, but I have these this process of being a, a dad and trying to be a good example and trying to, you know, help him learn discipline. And, and, and I have no idea what it feels like to be a young person surviving COVID high school, uh, quarantined with masks on and no smiles on campus and all of that, the craziness. So please, please, please tell us what's causing you stress. Tell us what the challenges are and what can we do about what you're experiencing? What do you want us to know? Uh, so with that, Allison or somebody out there, will you please tell me what we're looking for as far as breakouts? Are we going to have some breakout groups with 20 or 25 in them? I think we have 20 breakout rooms selected. Is that correct? Yes. All right. Perfect. So uh, if you're out there in Zoom land, you're about to get whisked off to some meeting room uh, with a bunch of other people. And if somebody in there, if, if there's a Butte County staff or somebody uh, with the North Valley Community Foundation, you kind of take the lead of the conversation and just jump in. Oh, very important. If you go down to the bottom of your screen, there's a reactions button. It's the far right. It's a little smiley face. And I can go to that and I can raise my hand. There's a raise hand function. You can see it just came up on my screen. I raised my hand. So raise your hand to talk. Okay. And then the person in the group will, whoever's sort of managing the conversation can make sure and hear from you again to the uh, community leaders. Just breathe and listen, breathe and take notes, and then we'll take some report outs from you at the end. All right, you're headed into those breakout groups, so that's terrific. I'll see you in 15 minutes. Hey, terrific. Everybody's back. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, I'm looking at a screen here. We've got a room full of people here that had a nice conversation, uh, a bunch of them, and I hope that's what's going on out there. Uh, I'm seeing some nice comments coming in from people who are contacting me directly. And this is the leap of faith of, you know, you can have a speaker go and show a video and then, okay, here's the next speaker. And all of that is very controlled. And then it's time to go, okay, paint a tile and submit it. And then now it's in your hands and have a conversation, you know, type something into the chat. Like we want to hand you the keys to this thing. For it to work, it needs to be personal for you. And we're all beginners at this maybe at some level. So just celebrate being a beginner. If you're like, wow, that conversation was really hard. You'll be like, well, I'm never doing that again. It'll be like, that oh, was hard, but I learned. You know, if you've ever played a sport, the way you play the first time, you probably get better. So just give yourself a break. Go, okay, hey, that was my first round in this. Huh, I'll get better on the next one. So we do have a second round. Uh, and we have, but we want to get a couple of comments from anybody out there who wants to share with the larger audience, like something you took from that first round. And if you have the reaction button in the bottom right, if you just raise your hand, like if I go down here, it's a little smiley face with the plus sign next to it. And I click raise your hand. You can see a little gold hand goes up in the bottom, in the top corner. And then I can lower my hand. That's what brings you to the top. And I see a hand up. 
Dante, I believe it's Dante. Excellent. And uh, Allison, can you spotlight them and then we can hear from them a few report outs. Thank you. Oh, um, I just wanted to say, um, Michael brought up this point. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was about how, like, I think uh, parents didn't, like want to listen to kids. And then it reminded me of like a thing that we learned in class. It was like, sort of like, we kind of realized this whole thing. It's like um, how uh, like people who are like themselves will listen to them more. Like, you know how uh, like people with the same like interest or like whatever will listen to each other more because it's like that sense of connection. So it's like when uh, like parents don't like listening to kids because it's like, oh, you silly teenagers, you're just kids, you know, whatever like that. I'm sure you've all felt that before. But like when adult talks to another adult, but like the same thing, they're like, oh, you're such a mature adult who knows what they're talking about because you're old and whatever. So it's just like for adults, just like use your knowledge and your power to like spread the word because parents will definitely listen to other parents or other adults more than they will listen to like their teenage kid or whatever. Nice. Thank you. This is us clapping in sign language. So if you want to give some applause, you can go like that. And uh, who's up? Go ahead. Um, kind of to uh, reflect off of Dante, uh, it seems like a lot of like older people seem to not really like to listen to younger generations because they don't understand what the younger generations are going through or anything like that. Um, and they just think that uh, because uh, we live in an age of technology or whatever, things are much easier or whatever, but that's not the truth at all. Awesome. Allison, you can just keep spotlighting people. Okay. This is weird. Okay. Um, one of the things that my breakout room was talking about a lot was that one of the struggles that we're dealing with is a lot of it being school wise because having to deal with doing school with everything like COVID it's kind of like <laughs> it's kind of like crazy and that's like one of the main things at least one of the main struggles that uh my group kind of like talked about that's all um with me and my group um but mostly me I feel like with the whole pandemic and everything it just, the whole social aspect isn't, it's like not connection. Like I'm a touchy person and I can't touch my friends. And that hurts because I have a really good connection with my friends. So when I see them, I can't touch them. So that's what I'm dealing with right now. Thank you. Keep going, Allison. You can keep spotlighting. Thank you so much, everybody who's sharing. And we want to get through as many as we can. So boom, who's next? Thank you for sharing. That was awesome. Yo, um, yeah, something my group talked about is uh, just with uh, how involved everyone is with social media, especially during COVID. Um, a big issue is that um, people try to fabricate this like image of themselves to where like they're always doing something and hanging out with people uh, to where if you're just, uh, you know, in your room uh, every night looking at that, it can cause a big impact. So just, I mean, that's just, we mainly just talked about like the effects of social media um, on kids and how that can damage their mental health if it's uh, not used properly. Awesome. We have time for like three more is all. Okay. Hopefully that was for me. Um, so in my group, we kind of talked about, we all kind of had the same struggles. Like we're all going through the same thing um, about how making connections with friends and keeping that connection is extremely hard, um, especially during COVID and even more during quarantine and when we were in quarantine. Um, and we all just really, we were all having a really hard time with keeping that connection with each other. And yeah. <laughs> Hi. 
Um, one thing that one one thing that was talked about in my group was how so social media and like the internet and things like that are they're relatively new. Like I know at least my parents and probably a lot of people didn't have it when they were at least till teenagers. So they don't really, I guess, understand it is kind of the right word. Like they, they don't know what it would be like to be my age or my si younger siblings ages and have access to like Instagram or just Google anything and whatever you Google will pop up, which can be bad. And I guess since they don't know, it's hard for them to regulate it and it can be bad sometimes. Like if you just have access to everything when you're like 10, you can find some really messed up stuff and that can be really bad. But also if you just never until you're 18, I guess, and they can't control you as much, have any access to the internet or social media or anything like that, or it's especially during um, quarantine and COVID, like I, if I didn't have social media or wasn't able to text, I couldn't interact with any of my friends at all. And I probably wouldn't have friends anymore, especially my best friend who doesn't even live in the same city as me. So I would just be completely isolated. So. Awesome. Thank you. Last one. Last one. Um, my breakout room, we talked a lot about like home life and how every kid has like a different situation. Situations can similar, but like we all have like different stressors, maybe like, maybe like an older sibling, for example, is like the, like the third parent or something like that. And I, I like to encourage, I say this, I'm like 45 years old, that administ I like to encourage that administrators, educators, not that they aren't, just like a reminder to be gracious. If like a kid has like struggles, not necessarily struggles. I know that some people have to like cook dinner for their family or they're the sole like laundry doer or like something like that. And they can't like get all the assignments done. And that was a major stress for a lot of people. In my awesome, thank you. I know we got the echo. Thank you, Phil, for being on that. So thanks for sharing host uh, spotlighted me okay good i'm up okay hey so we are gonna have time we have we want to have time for one more rotation and have it be long enough where you can have some conversation if you're out there in the ozone in the zoom world it's hard for us to really understand how well you're understanding what's happening so we're gonna set up one more conversation so welcome back everybody it looks like we're still well into the 400s as far as participation rate um, and we have huge the raffles coming up and just to close out our day, uh, really awesome presenter. Uh, but right now we want you to be the presenter. So we don't have a lot of time, but I think we have time for five or six young people and five or six of the community leaders. Uh, all right. Um, I talked about how I wish there was more resources for people who are transitioning from teenager to adult. Um, I just turned 18 and I have no idea what I'm doing specifically because since I was like 14, I've been telling myself that I was gonna, you know, I wasn't gonna make it to 18. I didn't think I was going to be alive at this point in my life. Um, and so I didn't prepare myself for adulthood because I didn't think that I would make it this far. And um, it, I don't know what direction I'm going in. And I know a lot of other people can relate to that. Um, so I wish there was just more resources to like point people in the right directions uh, who are, who have gone through the same thing that I have. Thank you so much for sharing. Keep it going team. Um, hi, so my group, we also talked about different hobbies that you can take like pen pal and all of that which is like actually really could help towards if you're having social media help. and i know this has already been brought up but seriously if someone's suicidal you're suicidal please do get help these people are here for you 
they have been trained they have gone through years and years of experience like over like seven years just to be there to cater to you so please do reach out for help and once again if you're in a more serious situation where you can't reach out for help because of your parents or not understanding about mental health because that's very common where our parents don't really think mental health is important so one of my group members like brought up a good point is find like a good friend that you trust that you can talk about them to you because sometimes friends can be like the best people that we need there for us so yeah that's mine <laughs> Um, so in my group, we were talking about, you know, good ways to help and, and those forces are being used, you know, I think, um, someone said earlier that, you know, I, the youth knows that their sources are there, but they're not being used. And I, and I, and I know we said this a lot, but I would like to say it again. I think most of those reasons are because, you know, we are afraid, or they are afraid that um, they're going to be judged, or people aren't going to actually listen to them, and they're just going to put them in and tell them what to, and so just you know, and just listening to them actually. And yeah, that's all I have to say. Hi, so in our group, I think the most poignant thing for me was um, probably the big fear I have as a mental health provider, but um, youth really knowing that resources are there, but under times of stress, really forgetting that they exist or how to access them and um, things that would be helpful are having those resources in a very accessible location. Like um, when you said that their school actually puts a number on the back of their ID card for school. And it would be helpful if there was more resources in um, on that same card for them to access easily. And also just having a adult check in with you regularly um, or knowing, noticing when there's some struggles happening or a change in behavior and having a trusted adult initiate that conversation and just ask those questions and ask how you're doing and um, reminders about where these resources are. Because again, forgetting that they they exist during times of stress. So whether it's a daily reminder, a weekly reminder for teachers or educators in their classes. And there might be one day that you mention it, that, that that's the day that a, a youth needs to hear that that resource is there. Hi everyone. And thank you to all of our youth leaders for guiding the healing process and teaching us so much. Some key takeaways from our group was about knowing that the resources are there and yet the way we as adults come to the table is so important and our approach and demeanor makes such a big difference. Um, when adults are open and approachable and have that open language and inclusive language, uh, people seem more likely to tap into the resource versus that person just having a name or a title or an office or a shirt or a badge. And then being mindful of the open and approachable language versus so caught up in the rules and the regulation based language and um, just checking in more often. It's not just checking in when there's a concern, but creating that small talk. So there's a relationship prior to a need. And lastly, a young person was reminding us that, um, you know, there's a lot of kids that might be in foster care or this young person lives in a home of six and their mom just doesn't have the time and isn't around and available to talk about these things. And so a lot of these issues that maybe adults at school think are being talked about at home uh, might not be. And so creating different spaces and opportunities within the school day um, will, will really be beneficial. Awesome. So uh, I am sorry, I see lots of gold hands up, which means hands are up. And we're not going to be able to hear from all of you. There's a few things that are going to happen. And I'm so sorry, Grace. I can see your face. I want to know what you have to say. But we're, we've got a lot more planned. But be heard, honestly, to all of you. You're going to get a feedback form. It's going to say any comments. Put those comments in. Tell 
a friend what you were going to say today. Tell an adult, tell somebody, hey, this is what I got out of the investment of my time and energy and my compassion and my heart today. Uh, we've got one more video we want to show. And then I just want to make a final point. And then uh, we're going to, Danelle will introduce us to our next speaker. We just have, we've packed a lot into today because man, it's a very rare opportunity. We have 400 plus people to talk about life or death stuff in the environment that we have right now. And COVID is just a whole curveball that's put, you know, rocket fuel on many of these sparks. Uh, so with that, before we come back and I'll, I'll finally pass it to Danelle, uh, let's play that jelly bean video. I think we're all looking forward to it. Those who know that video and, and then we'll have some comments and then we'll go to the next thing. So thank you everybody for sharing. Thanks for investing into those breakout groups. Again, this is not the end. This is a beginning of hopefully a next level of conversation about these topics. These are roughly 28,835 jelly beans. I counted out 500 of them and used those to weigh the rest. In this pile, there's one jelly bean for each day that the average American will live. You might have more beans in your life or maybe less, but on average, this is the time we have. Here's a single bean. It's your very first day, a special day, but kind of a rough day on everyone involved. Add 364 more and you have the first year of your life. Now, for a sense of scale, here are your first 15 years, 5,475 days, which brings us to the threshold of adulthood. And at that moment, this is the time that we have left. And this is, on average, what we will do with all that time. We will be asleep for a total of 8,477 days. If we're lucky, some of that time we'll be sleeping next to someone we love. We will be in the process of eating, drinking, or preparing food for 1,635 days. We'll be at work, hopefully doing something satisfying, for the equivalent of 3,202 of those days. 1,099 days will be spent commuting or traveling from one place to another. Maybe a little bit more if you live in L.A. On average, we will watch television in one form or another for a total of 2,676 days. Household activities, like chores and tending to our pets and shopping, will take another 1,576 days. And we will care for the needs and well-being of others, our friends and family, for 564 days. We'll spend 671 days bathing, grooming, and doing all other bathroom-related activities. And another 720 days will go to community activities, like religious and civic duties, charities, and taking classes. After we remove all those beans, this is what remains. This is the time that we have left. Time for laughing, swimming, making art, going on hikes, text messages, reading, checking Facebook, playing softball, maybe even teaching yourself how to play the guitar. So what are you going to do with this time? How much of it do you think you've already used up? If you only had half of it, what would you do differently? What about half of that? How much time have you already spent worrying? instead of doing something that you love. What if you just had one more day? What are you gonna do today? Phew, wow. Uh, I wish I had had the wisdom to produce a video like that, but thank you very much for prompting to share that today. Um, puts it into perspective for sure. Um, I couldn't help but, but feel a lot of gratitude today for having the opportunity to speak to you young people and to anybody else out there that's really passionate about using each of those beans to their fullest. Um, and I, and I, I couldn't help but just dig in my wallet and I'm not promoting AAA, but a lot of you are learning to drive. And when the car breaks down, you got to call somebody and you'll call a parent, you'll call a friend and there's agencies that for free will come and tow your car and they will tow you out of a ditch if that's you. And then the next day you, you probably call a mechanic and go, where, where can I get more help? I'm stuck. And you know, today for a lot of people might have sort of felt like, huh, I wonder who they're talking about. And for some of you, you're probably sitting there today going, wow, this whole thing is talking to me. Um, and if that's you, you're the one I stayed up 
you know, all night thinking about. You're the one that we've been working for months um, planning today for. And those of you who were like, huh, I wonder who they're talking about. You're the one that's in their life that maybe you don't realize that today was for them. Um, so be the resource. Be the one that knows CPR, right? Be the one that can, can take some action to make a difference. We're doing our best to go first. And maybe it's not perfect, but we're taking a shot at it. We're blazing this trail together with you. The mosaic process, this whole process, trying to connect our hearts and souls to yours through a virtual platform. There are plenty of people that came up with great excuses why we shouldn't do this, but we blazed forward with you in mind. Um, so from PV High School uh, to all of you, it's been a privilege sharing the day with you. I wanna pass it to Danelle and we're gonna finish with a big push. And I hope that we've captured enough of you to make an impact for tomorrow. Um, and thank you for that. Danelle, you're up.